Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome back to my troubleshooting series. Today we're going to take a look at Mars and I'm going to share with you my top five remedies to improve Mars energy in your life. Now, how do you know if Mars energy is out of whack in your life? Well, as an astrologer, I can take a look at your divisional charts. I can have a look at Mars throughout those. I can look at your Ishtakashvala scores, Shadbala, all these different things I look at. But equally, there are some symptoms of a strong Mars or a weak Mars that you'll just be able to diagnose yourself, okay? So for example, if your Mars is far too strong, you will find that ego becomes a really big thing. A person has an ego. That, that can be difficult to detect for your own self, but you can definitely spot this one in other people. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you a very famous example of a Mars in Leo in the first house. That would be a certain president of the United States of America, right? And you observe him and, you know, um, comb over guy, apprentice, all that, right? Uh, you know, and he said, he would always say that I, I do everything the best. I'm the best. I'm the best, right? There's all that kind of energy coming from this person. So you can easily diagnose that and say, wow, yeah, this person has a really big ego, okay? So that's an example of Mars being way too strong uh, in a person's chart. Another thing where Mars is very, very strong is that you'll find that the person is actually not that creative okay because creativity requires a certain amount of introspection and receptivity okay and we're going to get into those energies after this episode we're going to be looking at moon venus mercury sun we're going to be looking at all those now if your mars is far too strong you might discover that the person lacks love in their life or they lack feelings or they find it really hard to feel or they find it really hard to express emotion or they're afraid to feel, you know, feelings are just scary for them or, or something along these lines, right? So that's when Mars is far too powerful. Now, what are the symptoms of a weak Mars? Okay, so if your Mars is on the weak side, what you'll find in your life is that you won't get anything done. Okay, because this is action. This is action. And sometimes I've seen when Mars is flanked by uh, Venus and Moon, you know, and lauded by Venus, something like that. The person won't do anything, right? So it's just kind of Mars is just suppressed by all this feminine energy and there's no, there's no do happening in that person's life. Um, so you won't get anything done if you've got a weak Mars. Um, you won't set any goals, okay? Uh, the drive to do will be low. The desire energy will be low. Mars is a desire energy. It's a very strong desire energy. Mars drives you. Mars gets you going, gets, takes you to places, um, gets you to conquer things, meet people, do all kinds of things. Mars is a great power. The other thing about a weak Mars is that it might cause you to be someone who gets taken advantage of. Your boundaries might be weak and um, you might not stand up for yourself. You might not, and people might sense this about you as well. They might sense that um, they're able to just rush in and do things or, or that kind of thing as well. Uh, so not so great, but that, that is definitely one of the things because Mars is very much about boundaries, territory, right? A strong Mars will defend the territory, will de you know, defend itself um, and will have a healthy aggression, you know, uh, not too much and not too little as well. So an example of a weak Mars in a chart can be a Mars in Cancer. But again, you know, I'd want to see in which house that is and all kinds of other things. So those are the symptoms you could look out for in your life. But what are the tips that I have to improve Mars energy in your life? Well, top tip number one is just do it, okay? Just get it done, right? This is the big Mars energy. Get it done, make it happen. What are you waiting for? Strike while the iron's hot. Okay, we've got hot energy here. We've got fiery energy here. This is Aries. This is Mars, you know, Aries. We'll, we'll look at Scorpio, it's coming later, but this is, let's take a look at the first house here. Let's take a look at 
getting stuff done. Now, the other thing that I like about this top tip, just do it, is because it's the slogan, of course, of the company. Now, I don't know how you say it. Is it Nike? Is it Nike? I don't know, but it's a shoe company. It's all about exercise. And this is a very important top tip with Mars. You're going to want to look after the physical body, okay? The vehicle is very important. You're gonna to wanna to exercise. You'll want to diet, figure out you know, what's best for your body. Um, you wanna maintain the machine. The other thing is that you need to learn the value and the importance of rest, okay? Resting is really important. And I'm pretty sure they do that in gyms like where they teach you how to, um, you have to, see, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not very good at these things. But like, I think they teach you how to like do repetitions or something and then you have to rest and then you do more and then this way you build up. So you have to rest the muscles as well or something like that. Again, I don't know. But um, the other note that I've got here as part of top tip one, just do it, is to be wise about this, okay? So you're not just rushing around like a maniac, just doing everything. You've got to be wise and you've got to pick your battles, okay? 99% of battles are not worth fighting and save your energy for the 1% that is worth fighting. And I remember that that tip was given to me when I started my career in my work, what I was doing, and it was very valuable advice. And I really needed to hear that. Uh, because yeah, I, I think I was probably complaining about something and he said, look, don't worry about that. 99% of the battles aren't worth fighting. And that was very good that he told me that because yeah, that's important to know. All right, top tip number two, share your assets. This is an interesting one and it's interesting that I placed it so high up in the priority list here, but this is a really important one because and this is, we're kind of, now we're kind of getting into the eighth house here. We're looking at Scorpio, we're looking at Mars, you know, being in a watery place, so Mars in a fiery place up there in Aries, but Mars in a watery place here. The energy is a little bit different. And one of the things when we're looking at masculine energy is that yes, it's about doing, it's about getting things done. And what are you getting done? Well, largely you're going to be building or creating some kind of vision. And generally as part of that, you will be creating or acquiring or building assets okay so again it's more physical stuff so this is money cars property you're busy what are all these actions and goals about well it's about stuff it's about material stuff okay uh, and, and property is definitely a Mars thing right so you're, you're you're building up all of that now all of this if all you do is to hoard it and just keep it to yourself, you'll get no enjoyment, right? And it's really important that you share what it is that you have, okay? And this tip comes up because I have worked with quite a few women, about a handful of women, uh, my clients base, who, you know, they, they are married to husbands where the husband has built up a huge business, has a lot of wealth, has a lot of assets, but she built it with him but everything is under his name kind of thing. And, and, and it's very unfair. So one of the things I see, and, and this is a thing of uh, women who, who end up in these situations. It's, it's not usually the men who end up in these situations. It's usually the women, right? And they build everything from day one together. It's not like she's just come in and you know, it's not like an Amber Heard type thing. Sorry, I don't mean to mention Amber Heard. I know some people are on her side, whatever. Anyway, the point is, I have clients that I work with who, you know, they've, they've built everything together with their man, yet the man is not um, sharing the assets. And, uh, you know, it'll be good if there can be a blockage in the eighth house there basically, which is causing this. And it's, it's, you know, and sometimes you can see it in the lady's chart as well, in her D9 and things like that. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, so that, you know, and that can be a karmic experience that she has to go through. So I understand that. But what I'm saying here is that a good thing for 
masculine energy to do is to kind of let go because in Scorpio there's a lot of tightness there can be tightness there can be hoarding there can be um, and this represents physically okay I have consulted a lot of men who've had um, lower digestive issues massive lower digestive issues uh, and they're, they're holding on very tightly you know there's there's this kind of thing going on so there's a thing about releasing control letting go relaxing right this is really really important sharing assets is one way to improve mars energy top tip number three push through pain push through the pain barrier really you know uh, that's what this tip is all about now how did i come to this one well again when you're thinking about masculine energy and gym and the body and all that kind of thing i was thinking about that and I started thinking about how we've actually got a Gandanta point here. Okay, so from Scorpio to the fire of Sagittarius, we've got water meeting fire there. There is a Gandanta point there. Now, where else do we have a Gandanta point? We've got one 12th house to the first house, okay? Pisces to Aries, we've got one there. We've got another one, uh, Cancer to Leo, right? So these are the areas of Gandanta. Now, one of the ways that I read and see Gandanta is that it is a place of rebirth, okay? So the classic way of seeing that is between houses four and five. Okay, that's where a mother, four, uh, you know, there's the, the waters where the, where the baby is, right? In the, in the fluid there, and then fifth house, we've got children. You know, there's birth there, you know, giving birth, right? And a lady physically has to push through a pain barrier uh, in order to bring a child, a new being, into the world. Okay. Now I tend to think the Gandanta point at 12 and 1, that is where we are born. Okay. That is where you as an individual have emerged into this, into this dimension that we're in, right? What about the one between 8 and 9? I think this is where a man kind of he evolves and he has to push through a pain bar barrier he has to push through a dark night of the soul he has to push through you know the darkness basically yeah it's kind of like um, there's a lot of pain here if you're growing into becoming a spiritual being if you're having an awakening experience that's really painful and I tend to think that is the man's equivalent of giving birth in the way that a lady physically she physically gives birth but I think when a man kind of goes into evolving into his spiritual self I could imagine that there's a lot of pain there um, there is a lot of trauma uh, in this eighth house. We're going to talk about that in, in the last tip though. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in the last tip. But let's, let's take a look at the next tip here. So anyway, push through the pain barrier. Yeah, you just, you've, you've, you've got to feel it. You've got to feel it. You've got to go through it. You've got to go through the pain, right? I've got the note here. Yeah, I think the pain men go through as they rebirth into a spiritual person is as severe as when a woman gives birth. So that's, that's a process of maturing, you're birthing a new self, a new spiritual self, you're leaving behind everything you've ever known, but you're about to head into Jupiter and Saturn, and that's where you're about to become more of a person for the collective. You know, it's not just about you, right? It's about everybody, and it's really the time when you're not an individual droplet anymore. In the eighth house, you're an individual droplet, and if you want to stay that way, it's going to be painful. At some point, you'll be tested by life and you'll have to realize that you are the ocean. The bubble has to break and you will have to recognize that you are part of something far bigger. You know, the all is one, right? We'll talk about that more in the last tip. Top tip number four, win races slowly. Okay, this is an interesting one win races slowly really yeah because if your mars is far too strong you'll actually want to slow things down because mars energy is hot it's fiery and it's fast okay 
And we're really looking at Aries here, right? Number one, he wants to get there first. He wants to win. He wants to be fast and quick and all that. So I started thinking about Alain Prost. And if we bring up his chart, you'll see that he's got Mars in Aries. Okay, so this is a great person to be looking at for this episode. Now, he's interesting because he's a Formula One driver and his whole purpose for being, you know, his whole mission in life as a Formula One driver is to be the fastest. He wants to get to the finish line first. He wants to beat everyone else. He wants to win. Very Mars. But he is quoted as saying this, and I'll tell you the quote. It's so brilliant. He says, I always say that my ideal is to get to pole with the minimum effort and to win the race at the slowest speed possible. I love that. I think it's so brilliant. He wants to win the race at the slowest speed possible. Now, when I read that, I think to myself, oh, how clever, because it's very philosophical, but it's wise, okay? And a lot of that wisdom is coming from Saturn. Interestingly, he has Saturn exalted opposite his Mars, okay? So we can see the presence of Saturn in this statement, and we can see these two energies working closely together. And that's such a good thing. This is another kind of example of why, you know, Mars is exalted in Saturn. Saturn sets the structure and Mars just does the work, right? But um, this is nice here because it's showing some thought about preserving the physical body. And it's also about playing the long game, right? You don't want to burn up and burn out you, and you don't want to burn up the physical body or your car you know right the, the, the body is our vehicle and your, your car you don't want to break your car right so um, there's a lot of wisdom in this and he's saying to these hothead fast Mars guys you know win the race slowly don't be in such a rush take your time all that kind of thing I think that's a really good tip so, yeah, if you've got strong Mars energy, you might want to slow down. And then the final tip that I have, top tip number five, release control. Okay, so we kind of looked a little bit at this in top tip three, which was push through pain. There we were pushing through the pain, right? But in top tip five, release control, this is all about you're going to have to let go at some point. You're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to recognize that there's something greater than you and there's more to life than just you. Okay, so this is an ego death, right? Now, death does happen down here in Scorpio in the eighth house. Okay, another way that I like to look at this is when we're in Aries up there, Mars is in control. Okay, now in Scorpio, Mars is out of control, right? In Aries, Mars is the leader. Mars is taking charge. Mars is winning. Mars is making things happen. Okay, we saw that with Alan Prost. He's winning, right? He's got Mars in, in Aries. Brilliant. In Scorpio, Mars is out of control. Okay, there's, there's, there's trauma. There's all kinds of bad things are going on. Uh, but there's also good out of control as well. And this came into my mind this morning when I was thinking about this tip. And I started hearing that song from Greece and I'm like, oh yeah, this is interesting. And I've got some like rock and roll angels. I don't know, they're amazing. They keep giving me good songs. Anyway, so I'm, I'm hearing this song from Greece and John Travolta's singing, I've got chills, they're multiplying. And he sings, and I'm losing control, right? And he's losing control, why? Because he's falling in love and it's beautiful. So there's good out of control energy. Okay, well, there's wonderful falling out of control energy, right? How wonderful is that? But equally, down here in the eighth house in Scorpio, yes, there's good out of control energy, but there's the flip side. There's difficult out of control energy, and that is trauma, that is massive anger, that is pain, that is difficulty, that's spiritual awakening. You're going through some kind of massive ego death, or spiritual awakening where everything feels out of control you don't know what's going on anymore everything you knew doesn't make sense now right who are you you don't even know what that is like it's just it's and that's a spiritual awakening that's a dark night of the soul 
that's all this kind of stuff. And I do believe that, you know, in these troubled waters here of Scorpio, this is a place where man discovers that he alone is not enough, right? It's like, and he's not totally in charge. You really discover that down here. And some people down here will reach for a substance, you know, they will start to depend on a substance to bring a little bit of happiness or, and this is a good alternative, depending on family, okay? If you've got family, if you're blessed with family, you know, you can depend on them and that's a wonderful thing. Um, but equally, you'll try depending on all these different out, outside external things. And this is a place, this is a part of the zodiac that really forces you to go within and to reach for something higher, something greater than yourself. You know, what is this power that sustains me? What has been sustaining me? You'll start to recognize that. You'll start to recognize that you've been so looked after by something that's bigger than you. You know, and you'll start to reach for that more and more and more. And you'll, by, you know, when you do that, you're surrendering, you're releasing control. And what you start to do when you're doing that is you're no longer just this kind of, you're no longer the droplet. You, you recognize that I am a droplet that's part of a giant ocean, you know, and that's where the Gandanta point is, and that's where you enter kind of Jupiter and Saturn's uh, realms, and you, you know, your life becomes more about just you. It becomes about the all is one. It becomes about the collective. It becomes about how can I serve? How can I share? How can I give? You know, um, yeah, so I've got the note here. When you surrender to God, the war ends and you can carry on the hero's journey. So release control, surrender. You know, these are good things when it comes to Mars energy. But guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Let me know what are your top tips. As part of this series, you guys have been putting the most amazing top tips below in the comments. I remember for Saturn, somebody said um, that you can walk have long walks and things like that. I thought that was brilliant. So let me know what are your Mars top tips below. I would love to hear from you and stay tuned with this series. We're going to have Moon, Venus, Mercury, Sun. There's a lot more to come. So thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.